the premise of the tantric teaching is precisely, you know, to being able to perceive through the senses and reconfirm again and again that what is your true status. This is, this is not a limitation. So those who said that a future of a humankind, a future of a human capacity is to somehow widen that 4% into this woo, you know, now we can walk around and screen each other. I can tell you what's happening to your liver because I can see what you ate for breakfast. It's still floating there. I can like, you know, I can read all thoughts of my cat other than what he wants to eat. I can really, really see beyond the sunset because my sight is not bound by the horizon line. I can see the sun all the time. The problem is whether the sun is setting or rising. Nobody thought about that, you know. The limitation of the fact that space causation here is a blessing in disguise that I can perceive something extraordinary every day. So, let me this be an entrance to response to Brenda's question here. So, yes, sometimes there are these extrasensory perceptions, a little bit of that. There are no voices outside of me, yet I hear some voices. There are something my corner of my eyes may see, you know. There are some, there are these, what I will call them, anomalies. Nothing wrong with them. All these anomalies are also part and parcel of spiritual breakthroughs. And whenever we are tapering with a lot of spiritual methodologies and practices, and it depending how we are being guided and how rooted we are in, in certain very, very sound philosophical ground of which I spoke so much uh, by now so that we can finally understand that spiritual practices of this kind, you know, cannot be without giving us ourselves a proper orientation because it can trampoline and send us and takes us into anything and the mind will quickly begin to fill the gaps, fill the voids, and imagination will begin to play havoc. So, with regard to this um, dissociative identity disorder, you're asking, is that possible that something else is going on at a more subtle spiritual level? Well, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to go into the language of the psychologists and psychiatrists and somehow meet somewhere where there is a balanced approach between spiritual understanding and so that psychologists don't have their feathers ruffled and psychiatrists don't feel they're losing their job and somehow they need to re-educate themselves? I don't know. I'm in a, in a quandary now. Because as far as I understand, psychiatrists don't know shit from Shainola of what is actually happening to a human being. Psychologists are a little bit better because most psychologists, most honest ones, encountered some difficulties in their life, faced these difficulties bravely enough, and entered that path to become psychologists in the first place. That's the path of becoming a psychologist. In that sense... You don't have to become a psychologist. A spiritual approach to life is to simply know who one is and not being afraid to go halfway through. Going all the way. And going all the way will require to transgress and pass through the territory, which is the purgatory. But before that, we may detour to the hell. We might go and rescue the Eurydice. We might keep company to the Orpheus. We might go like Orgonauts. We might go like Dante Alighieri being taken by hand by Virgil, his favorite poet. We might do all the stuff. We might just as well because that's what awakening to who we are really made of. Living in a sliver of some kind of uh, cozy uh, level of what we consider to be life, and it's nothing to do with aforementioned 4%, I'm just talking about, you know, that's not makes us aware fully 
the full awareness can only come from exposure to that. Therefore, all these analogies and therefore all this uh, descent into the underworld, ascend through the purgatory, finally to know what the heaven is like, only to go back on earth to realize that that's actually where it all is at all times. There is no other heaven and there is no other earth. No other earth will be ever given. No extraterrestrials, none. We are here forever. Not because we are on this planet Earth. No, this is a wrong this is a wrong understanding. This planet Earth, the solar system, is I. I structured myself. I'm structured as this cosmos. Structured. The moon, the sun, the planets, I'm structured as this earth. As all the crystals, as all the minerals, I'm structured here. And I expand from here into the infinity. And the fact that this possibility of having this experience is because I structured myself like that, out of the cosmic dust. Because I am the cosmic dust and I am this universe. So therefore there is no escape from that. There is no better planet, no worse planet. There are no terrestrials or no extraterrestrials. It's a... It's a bogus stories of uh, people who haven't really educated themselves and quite frankly don't have enough imagination even to think straight. It's a very unimaginative way of thinking of the universe as there is another planet, as there is like, you know, and I can transfer myself when the planet is messed up, you know, we can sh board together, you know, tough if you don't have the cash to board that because obviously poor ones will die. We don't want poor and, you know, we only want to take the best ones to the next planet. Otherwise they will mess up another one. No, of course not. We will do a specific seminar when I want to talk about what it means extraterrestrial and what, what it means terrestrial. Maybe we will call it walking universe because I want you to understand, all of you need to understand that you are you are where the universe is structured throughout and every plane of existence already within yourself discovered and discovered whatever every plane you are made out of these planes you are these planes and yet you are as you are that's the greatest magic and mystery here at the very same time everywhere no here and nowhere 